So more mending today. This is the jacket that needs mending. It's a really nice Harris Tweed gentleman's jacket. Uh, it's probably not that old by looking at the label. Probably from the 70s, I reckon. That's just, that's just a guess there. I've got a tweed jacket that um, was given to me very kindly in exactly the same tweed. So it's obviously a, a cloth that Harris weave and it is gorgeous. It's quite a thick one. But this one has in, is in need of some repair. So the first thing I'm going to do is repair the cuffs. Actually, this one's not too bad. It's just a bit worn. But this one's really bad. So this one needs quite, so it's going to be quite a deep binding. And some of the buttonholes are very worn. And I think they've been, I think that's a, a modern mend, not the fabric having a repair, not, not the stitches holding a buttonhole together because I think they're machine buttonholes. So the machine buttonholes would have been straight through the fabric. Whereas if you do a hand buttonhole, sometimes you whip round the hole, first of all, just to hold all your fabric layers together. But I think that's a repair which was not been done by us. So that's somebody in the past that's tried to repair this jacket. So let me step back from him a little bit. This, this mannequin is my gentleman's mannequin. He's called Hamish, by the way. And he's flanked by one of my 20s dresses there and one of my 1910 outfits there. So have we got all of Hamish in there? We've got all of Hamish in plus a bit of rubbish. My apologies. There, that's better. So I have some green suede here which is an off cut from a job and I worked on that job over five years ago well no maybe no yes five years ago I did this job so I bought this green scrap of suede home especially for repairing this jacket then I know in this light it looks really green and the jacket looks really dull but actually in natural daylight they look really nice and complement each other quite well and because it's the cuffs it would also get dirty quite quickly so I think it would be fine and I think it will look quite nice. So that's today's job. So here is the suede I'm going to repair the tweed with. It is an off cut, so as long as I can get, well actually, yeah, two lengths the same like that, we should be fine. What is that? Yeah, that'll be all right for going around a cuff. And I'm going to cut wider than I need because I want to, well, I can always trim it down again. You can see where the off cuts were taken from this. So we've got the very yellow light in here because it's not very bright today and I've got my very yellow workroom light on. You don't have to worry about grain with leather in the same way as you do fabric, but there are always better bits to use than others. So obviously the best bit of this has been used because it's an off cut, but along there should be just right for what I want. Let's go two and a quarter, which is more than I need.
And now to get a really nice finish, I would recommend using a rotary cutter. Um, mine is still stuck with all the rest of my equipment that I didn't manage to rescue from work after lockdown, so I shall use scissors, which, as this is such a nice suede, it will cut beautifully. Here are my two strips of suede. I've probably cut them a bit too narrow. I wanted them to be about an inch deep when finished, so I've only got quarter of an inch seam allowance on there. And then the inside will be the raw edge of the suede sewn to the inside of the cuff. So let's take that button off to make this, and um, we might have to undo some of that sewing on the inside of there, which is just done by hand to hold everything in place. Yeah, I think let's make life easy. Actually, the button's secure, so it's just that bit of stitching. Firstly I'm going to pin all the layers of the cuff together and then I'm going to mark up half an inch from the torn edge and I'm going to firstly put pins there and then I'm going to tack round with a tacking thread and this is going to be my stitch line and the fabric will be folded over from that line and round to the back of the cuff. So this is me just putting the pins in place that will mark that half an inch up from the edge. And this is the tacking stitch going in now. I was just checking the leftover bits. Of, I've cut, already cut my strips of leather and there's just enough scraps left to keep in case the elbows of this jacket ever get worn through to give them that really typical, isn't it, sort of like... Uh, old-fashioned lecturer or teacher that has the leather patches on the on the elbows of his jacket so I've just saved enough to make sure that if that ever needs doing I've got enough left the trick will be to put that leather somewhere safe and remember that I've done that for when the day comes the only reason I knew where this bit of leather was that it has been in my mending pile for that long there's a pair of shirt and a no, a pair of trousers and a shirt in that mending pile I suspect my partner forgotten has forgotten he even owns. They've been there so long. I'm just going to keep my cut edge of my leather parallel with the with the folded edge of the cuff. And I'm gonna stitch on my half an inch line, fold this over and finish it on the inside like that, again, leaving that edge raw. Although it's still going to be quite bulky, so I may end up cutting some of the leather underneath the way yet, but let's get it sewn on there first and see how it looks. Normally when working with a leather binding like this, I would use clips like this rather than pins because it's easier, because sometimes you're working with a leather that will not be pierced by a pin or you don't want pierced marks to show. And this would be really helpful, but the job I was working on before lockdown uh, involved a lot of leather and suede and difficult to pin fabrics. And all of my clips are with, are also with my equipment that is still on that job. I will get it back eventually, or I'll go back to work eventually, we'll see. So this suede is actually quite soft, so should be able to get, yeah, get a pin through it without any great problem. Uh, but I would thoroughly recommend these for difficult to pin fabrics and they just come from Amazon. You can buy special quilting ones, but these much, are much cheaper but than they are from Amazon. So think about where you would like your money to go if you're going to invest in any. I'm doing the very bad habit of putting the pins in my mouth and then I can't say what I'm doing because I've got pins in my mouth. 
And something I should say to everybody, all the time anyway, is don't put pins in your mouth. I do it. I have done it for years. I have also swallowed a pin and had to go to the hospital to be x-rayed to see where it's gone. It went to my stomach, which is absolutely fine. Apparently they just pass through quite normally. But the danger is if they go to your lungs, which is why it had to be checked. So that was a complete waste of everybody's time. So what I should reiterate from that is don't put pins in your mouth. Move on to the other cup. These strips far longer than I probably needed, but that's fine. I am going to end up cutting some of the leather away on the inside, especially around here where you've got double, double wool and the seam allowance of the wool from the cuff as well. So we'll see what needs to be done once we've sewn it on. Let's just mark where I've got to the end there. Okay, now we're ready for the machine. So let's take the back of that away to make it slightly easier to fit the cuff under the machine. Now I'm lazy and if I can use the foot of my sewing machine edge as a seam allowance guide I always will but I think with the thickness of this I actually need to use the first line on the seam on the on the plate which is also a seam allowance guide. I've got green thread on the machine a fairly large needle I think I've got a 16 in there. I would use a leather needle if I had one, but it turns out I don't. One of many things I don't have at the moment. I'm definitely going to have to do a restock. I've got my needle to the far left. And yeah, that makes my seam allowance half an inch. Let's go for a number three. I think often with leather, well, a leather, depending on the fabric, whether you want to very, if you make two closer stitch with leather it just perforates it and makes it tear so you actually need to go for a larger stitch length with leather so maybe let's actually go for a 3.5 and let's see how this goes <laughs> The suede could do with a Teflon foot, really, but I don't have one. So the suede's going to need some forcing to get it through. That's again when a larger stitch is easier. Yes, if I had a Teflon foot, it wouldn't drag the leather so. a really thick bit. In one of the sheds I do have a machine that's set up for doing leather upholstery. It's not mine, it's just living here temporarily. But if I really couldn't get through this tweed I could use that machine. leather a bit. Actually I'm pinning what I've done. Thank you. 
off a bit there. But it looks quite nice. Yeah, I'm quite pleased with that. Let's, let's move on to the other side. Here we go around the other cuff, exactly the same. Where I said a Teflon foot, which is a plastic, well, a Teflon coated underneath of the foot, glides over the leather easier. If you don't have any of that, some people put a very thin layer of plastic, like thin clear plastic from a plastic bag, between their sewing machine and the, the fabric. That helps it glide a little bit. Or you can even put paper under, which is also really helpful if you're working with very um, flyy, slippery fabrics, like some sort of sil some silk, some satins, um, silk organza. It helps keep things a bit more rigid, but then you have to tear all the paper away afterwards. So you want to use a really thin paper for that. And you can also use a thin paper over leather, but as we're only doing this little bit of sewing, I'm just going to force it through. So let's just carry on exactly as we did before. Um, excuse the horrendous state of the inside of the cuffs. That's something else I'm going to have to obviously tackle. Um, but let's just concentrate on the binding for now. So I'm just going to pull the green up Pin it in place and then I'll have a look at it from the right side and see if it needs any adjusting. But I'm hoping that it will just be as simple as stitching it down here. You could of course stitch in the ditch down there and just machine straight through it but I think it would actually be quite nice to do this bit by hand. Now where I've got all this extra fabric, I'm actually just going to cut the suede down and leave it raw and just whip over the edge by hand. I'm not going to tuck any of this leather in and make it any bulkier than it already is. So I'll just cut some away like that for now and then I'll neaten it up in a minute get the excess out of the way. So the only bit I'm really worried about is making sure that bit overlaps nicely and I think that's going to be fine. Just need to do a bit of adjustment there. Oh. Lots of outside noise, don't know if you can hear that. Probably even cut that away a little bit at an angle so it doesn't poke out. I'll just whip that together. And the same over here. All right. Let's pin the other side and then we'll do the hand sewing this side and then turn it in inside out to sew. This green looks, it's quite a, a strong green, but as I said, with a bit of wear and a bit of dirt, it'll probably dull down a little bit. Obviously I could have used a brown, a brown leather. 
or a brown suede as well. That would have been just as good a contrast in than some leathers. Some of them you just think, well, they're, they're almost a bit soul destroying to sew. They look great when they're done, but when you're trying to pin them together or hold them together in the process and you cannot get anything to go through, it can be very tough on the fingers. My fingers are really weak from obviously sewing nice, nice soft fabrics at home, but the job I was on Previously, it was a lot of quite tough fabrics and my 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 fingers and my skin had got really good at it, really built up, you know, the hard calluses for dealing with tough fabrics. So this is the outer edge, this is the bit. Right, now let's find some suitable thread to catch all that down on the inside. Up by whipping shut the raw edges of the suede here over the edge of the cuff and then I'm going to just probably slip stitch, whip stitch the raw edge of the suede all the way around on the inside to neaten it off. And I'm just going to do a few stitches on the spot there just to make sure this is really held nice and secure. Sorry, that bit's getting in the way. Okay, let's just pin that bit down so it doesn't actually flap up and hide what I'm doing the whole time. As I said before, I could just machine this from the right side in the either sink stitch or stitching in the ditch and just do a line of machine stitching right through there. I thought it would be nice to hand sew it as I've got the time. Okay, a few stitches there. Now I'm going to want to bite a little bit into the leather so that it doesn't just tear. So these stitches aren't going to be invisible. And obviously I don't want it coming through to the front of the sleeve either but there's plenty of fabric here so there's no need to worry about that. Obviously I could have trimmed this down to a much narrower binding if I wanted to, but considering this is part of the garment that gets quite a bit of wear with hands passing through it when you have to put the jacket on or off, I thought actually the more leather on the inside, sort of the longer lasting, hopefully it will be, especially if I fix this lining as well, which is 
disgusting and need of quite a bit of repair. It's my afternoon sorted. Backstitch. The end of the tacking stitches means when you take that tacking out, you can just cut the thread, hold onto the knot, pull it, and out it comes really quickly and easily. Anyway, let's finish this cuff. Again, I'm just whipping the raw edges of the suede together to finish this off. I'm just doing an extra fastening off down here because that will be stronger than doing one down there. And also this bit will be hidden behind the, the placket anyway. Of the sleeve. Hmm, right, that's that. And I am going to go through all of the layers to do this. So double thread again, I have changed to a normal needle now. Leaving that loop there, go all the way in through all the layers, come out. And I'm going to do that one more time so that the cuff's already held in place before I sew the button on.
fix the wrists. I still need to fix the lining on the inside, but what he would really like is a buttonhole here on the lapel so he can wear it with his watch chain up here and then put the watch in the pocket. This tweed jacket has that same, has that feature and he wears it that way. So we're just going to copy the positioning of this buttonhole onto, onto there. So that's easy enough and I'll show you how I'm going to do it. I will also do a few practice buttonholes because you never want to do your first buttonhole straight on a jacket that, that someone really likes. So part of me thinks if I follow the angle of the collar, which is that, the buttonhole should be at angle because that's what that one's like. Hmm, I'm not really sure. Anyway, I think I'm going to go with it because I would like to do this on the straightest grain possible for the neatest buttonhole possible. So now it's time to do a practice buttonhole and then make that hole there as well. So I'm using the same linen thread I intend to sew the buttonhole with, but this is not actually going to be um, part of the buttonhole. This is just to hold all the layers together. And because this is quite an old jacket, the um, sorry, the internal linen feels quite brittle. Um, and uh, and I'm going to go all the way down and then come all the way back up because I really want to catch those under layers so I'm making sure that I'm not missing this bit of the wool. Change the angle of it a little bit because this one is slightly more like that whereas this one I followed the grain but I actually have another jacket that fits me in this same tweed and I had a look at the lapel buttonhole on there and it was going straight along the grain and I think for the sake of me doing a nice buttonhole I'm going to stick with that grain. But I, um, I'm going to get a, a tape measure out one more time and just check that I'm happy with that distance there and that distance there and the angle that it follows from that bit of the collar. You see, if I put my finger, actually, let's, let's demonstrate with a ruler. hole to be about three quarters of an inch. So I'm just going to stick between those two white lines. 
There we are. Yeah, nice smooth cut. And now I'm going to just whip around the hole to keep all the two layers, all, all the, there's more than two, there's several layers together. All right, I'm now going to fasten that thread off because I don't want that to be part of the thread that forms the buttonhole. I want to use a fresh bit for that. So let's get that out of the way. Bring my needle out to the front. And making sure that the needle goes all the way through all those layers catching underneath. Now there's two ways of working a buttonhole stitch and I have been wondering whether I do it the way I normally do it might not be right so, prop, so the proper way of doing it is you put the needle needle under bring the point out and that's where your stitch comes to so that's gonna have to be the same point each time and then you take the length of the thread which I'm having trouble grabbing so that's this bit here goes under the needle over the needle and then you pull the needle through and down you don't want that little double bit that I've ended up with there okay and pull the knot down so that the knot of the buttonhole is here although the knot of the stitch is here forming a solid edge around the inside of your buttonhole. But what I normally do, and I'm not sure whether this is actually forming exactly the same stitch, is I bring the needle out at that point and then loop through. And it still creates a knot that forms on the edge, but I have had a conversation with someone once whether I'm only doing a blanket stitch, but I think that is a buttonhole stitch. So you can do it either way. But the most important thing is that you come out in the same place each time, which is harder through this thick, thick layer. 
So either wrap the thread under the needle, over the needle, camera so close I keep hitting it sorry now I'm using a linen thread and I can see that a silk thread would be better for this because you get a sort of thicker thicker coverage actually alternating how I do the stitch at the moment, one my way, one the proper way. And they do look the same, so I think that's alright to do it my way. So here is the footage of my practice buttonhole. I've done the, the cut to the buttonhole open and I've done the whip round the raw edge exactly the same as I did on the tweed. This time I'm using two layers of wool and some nice silk twist for my practice buttonhole and I'm going to do the proper buttonhole stitch all the way around rather than my one that I'm still not completely convinced isn't, isn't perfect. So for anyone that needs to see a whole buttonhole being sewn this is how you can do it equally. There are many great examples of this on the internet done by other people in video and illustration format and most of the good old fashioned sewing guides show you how to do this as well in books. But if you are a visual person and you want to see what I did, here's a sample.
So now I've reached the end of the buttonhole and it just work a little uh, back back stitch over the um, over the open end and then I work the buttonhole stitches just as I've done me doing all the way around wrapping the thread around the needle just to finish off that back edge so that the buttonhole can't sort of tear or rip open further than you want it to and again those stitches are going right through the whole the whole garment so you can see them on the underside as well they're not just being worked on top and that once I've done that that's the buttonhole finished I will just take the remaining thread underneath and fasten off um, I hope this was helpful as I said there are other demonstrations on the internet that are probably far clearer of how to do a buttonhole I will add a link to one of those as well and then we can go back to finishing the jacket So the final mending on this jacket is to fix the worn lining at the centre back neck. I've just cut a bias strip of fabric. I didn't have anything the same as the lining, so this is a piece of um, it's a piece of silk, I think, quite a smooth, smooth, crisp silk. And I've just cut a bias strip and I've shaped it into a curve similar to that of the back neck. And I've pinned it in place over the worn lining, and I'm just slipping it down. So I'm slipping the edge here along the collar, and then along the shoulder seam and around the back neck as well and this is just to I haven't fixed the worn lining underneath I've just covered it up so this will stop the whole wearing larger hopefully where it, where it rubs on the back of the neck and the shoulders and I'm now going to do the same thing to the wrists as well which you saw when I was fixing the leather binding in place And here's the inside of the cuff and I'm just going to whip the torn lining closed and then I'm going to cover this in a bias strip of the same silk that I put round the centre back neck. I'm just overlapping the uh, selvage edge of the bias strip so that I don't have a big chunky join in this in this lining. So that's what's going on here. And now I'm going to turn all the seam allowance in and slip stitch. So here we are. First of all, I'm slip stitching the bit of silk to the lining of the sleeve, covering up all the torn, uh, worn out edges. And then once I've gone round around the outer edge, I will just slip down that little bit of selvage there and go around the inner edge sewing the silk onto the wool as well and that will finish off the cuff nicely I hope. And here is the silk slip stitched in place on both edges just neatening everything off containing the torn bits and hopefully hopefully adding some further wear to the jacket. I also went over the buttonholes in the same linen thread as the top buttonhole. Thank you. 